that makes me feel really good, that fact, because this is my grandmother's jacket, so it's been around <laughs> since the 1940s. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm an object and textile designer, but I'm certainly not a fashion designer, so I've approached this problem very differently from how Alison suggests. Um, and I'm also a sessional staff member at Art and Design. Um, so my practice is really driven by trying to find less materially intense ways of living um, and creating objects that can help us to do that. I have always really, really cared about the natural environment um, and so I'm trying to also, in some of my work, to connect people back to the natural environment and also to natural um, material cycles and their life cycles. So, um, this project that I'm going to talk about tonight is an ongoing one. It's, I've been kind of working on it on the side for about eight years. Um, it began by researching around some design for sustainability theory, so reading some academic writing and kind of looking at some e experts and their ideas. Particularly Stuart Walker was someone I looked at and he talked about this mis mismatch between what a design uh, needs to do, mostly object design, and um, how long the material um, is last for, so how durable the material is. So a really good example of this, um, a kind of banal example of this is a toothbrush. Mostly toothbrush brushes are made from plastic or kind of rubber materials, and we all know that they last a really, really long time. Toothbrushes are also designed to be thrown out within three months. So there's a huge, huge mismatch there between what the designer is um, aiming how long they want the product to last for but how long, and how long the material lasts. So I started to ask the question of how we can put this idea into practice. How do we actually design objects that are more connected to the natural cycle and the natural life cycles of materials? Um, at the same time, I talk, I was, um, I'm a very hands-on designer, so I make a lot and I work with, directly with the materials. So I taught myself how to make paper using traditional paper making techniques, and I completely fell in love with this material. It's really great to get your hands on. Um, this image is um, with the fibers only kind of half beaten, so before it kind of turns fully into a paper pulp, that's kind of like a textile tangle that you can play around with. So it's really lovely to actually work with the machines themselves and have a little bit of control over what the materials um, turn out like. Um, during this process, I also learned that uh, plant-based fibers such as cotton can be used in this process. So when you go into an art store and you buy really good quality art paper, mostly that's cotton rag and it's made from cotton. This is a practice that happens all around the world. So cotton is often recycled to make paper, but we're not generally aware of that in, in Australia. And we don't, it's not something that we really practice in Australia. <coughs> um, a few years later, or well, and enter textile waste. So I started working with textile waste at this stage. Um, a few years later, I also did a research project around uh, textile waste um, with a group of friends. And particularly, we looked at denim and cotton. So we're looking at kind of uh, denim jean models um, in fashion and how they can, uh, how we can create a circular economy for, for cotton in Australia, which is quite a difficult task because we don't, as Alison mentioned, we don't have much of a textile manufacturing industry here. So these two worlds kind of beautifully came together: paper manufacturing, which we do have here in Australia, and textile waste. Uh, Figures in Australia, we throw about 27 kilograms um, of textile waste per person per year into landfill. That's going straight to landfill, that's not even going to your charity shop. So, experimentation and iteration. As a designer, um, and I think you can apply this to any kind of area that you work in, um, I really got down and dirty with. Um, the material and what options there are there. So I sprayed, I pulped, I tried different settings, I worked with different types of de denim and different types of cotton. Um, I brought in uh, techniques from other fields, so I used moulding and casting techniques that I was learning elsewhere, I used press moulding and all sorts of things. I tried everything. Um, and so as I learned new skills as a designer in, in my practice, I also brought these this project. So I started to throw ceramic forms which were then cast and tried to um, make paper objects that way. I 
And so this is one of the results. This is quite old now, but um, this is a denim light that came out of this experimentation. So using casting methods, um, but the result was really unexpectedly beautiful because you get that really um, beautiful kind of denim texture. Um, the color, I haven't added any color here, so the story of the denim is kind of told in the actual object itself, which was a really nice surprise. Uh, I don't have an image, a finished Im image of this object, but this is the process of a clock being made. So again, a clock is something that we buy and that just sits, its purpose is to sit on the wall and tell the time. We generally make this out of plastic, metal, um, glass, lots of heavy materials, and it's not something that we keep for our whole life, so why not make it out of a, a less kind of durable material such as paper? Um, so I think for you guys, I think it's really important to challenge the way that people think about objects, that people think about their clothes. Um, don't look at the status quo, try and um, think outside the box and think about how you can um, kind of make new ideas and make people really think about what they're um, consuming. Um, the other thing is, so never assume. I think really research your project. Um, through my initial research, I realised uh, that we think of Paper and card, cardboard is a pretty environmentally friendly material. Um, that's our general perception of it. It can be recycled and we all know that, so we feel quite good when we put buy something out of paper and we put it in the recycling. But actually our consumption of paper is increasing every year and it's um, increasing at an unsustainable rate. So we still chop down old growth forests and we still grow a lot of plantation, which is quite damaging in some areas. So I set out to change that message through, through um, my designs to kind of to try and increase the value of paper and also textile waste and slow down the use. So I think um, the other thing that's really important is experimentation and working directly with the materials if you can. So through um, a strong engagement with the materials, um, this little project came up as well. So I realised that by taking old jeans that were destined for landfill and by chopping them up and making a pulp. I was left with seams um, and also buttons and zips. So I thought, well, what's going to happen to these? So that was a fun little project, then experimenting with the metal, um, melting it down. Um, you can see the lead button at the top left, melting down the metal and forming a, a solid metal piece. And then I started experimenting with what you could do with that material, which may, um, maybe then could be incorporated back into the object design. So I think when you work really closely with the material or a process or talk to your manufacturers very closely and understand that making process, then opportunities come up where you can intervene and maybe save another waste material or kind of um, take, make the process even simpler. So let's not just design stuff out of waste and make, make it a circular economy, but let's also challenge the status quo and um, really question the models of practice that already exist. <coughs>